Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. We're back. We're <laughs> back. Well, I hope you guys had a great day yesterday. We certainly did. And looking forward to being with you guys this morning. Oh, my goodness. You guys took me serious. My oh, girls wow. were out at the mall. <clears throat> they were on the street praying for people at the restaurants. Mm -hmm. I <clears throat> just was so, and am, I love it when the body of Christ gets up. Yes. And, and mobilizes, mobilizes and takes action. Hey, let me just, let me just, let me go here. Go ahead and talk to him. I'm going to just brag on a couple people here for a second because on Facebook, you guys, uh, I love Martha and Shara. Melissa was like a machine yesterday, going out, ministering, loving on people, praying for people. Isn't that awesome? I didn't see anybody baptizing people, but that's okay. That's coming. It's coming. Uh, okay, you said to text you about helping someone. Well, one of my students from last year came into my room. This is a teacher. Oh. In a school setting. Wow. <laughs> came to my room about to cry, asking if we could talk. I knew the Friday before her parents had told her they're getting a divorce. I stopped what I was doing immediately, mm. went out into the hall, <clears throat> and I got to listen, hug, and love on this sweet child who was hurting. Oh, wow. You know, there's settings where sometimes the biggest thing you can do is say, I love you. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing you can do is wrap your arms around when somebody's feeling lonely and hurting. Uh, you never know what you're doing could be saving a life. Mm. Right now, suicide is the number two cause of death. Mm. Greater than anything. Think about the trillions and trillions of dollars spent on heart disease and cancer and dis blood disorders. But the number two cause of death is suicide. So mental depression, things that are going on inside of people's mind, will, emotions, inside of their souls. Martha said, God is moving in our M Women group in Washington State. We're praying and speaking the words that God gives for people we're encountering in the marketplace. We're praying in the workplace, in the hospitals, lifting up wounded church people, wherever the Lord prompts us and makes him famous. I love that. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. We got another one down here. Good morning, ladies. I just prayed for a young lady that was in the break room. She was sitting with a group of ladies telling them that she is tired, stressed out, and just broke up with her boyfriend. She said, girl, please pray for me in a goofy and silly way. I said, okay, I will. <laughs> she looked surprised. She stood up and we prayed together. Wow. That's in a break room at her work? That's in a break room at her work. She's just like, girl, pray for me. And the girl, and oh. one of our women goes, all right, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. That is what we're talking about today in our book. Today we're talking about kingdom mentality, mm -hmm. what it means to constantly be operating as an ambassador to the kingdom that you really represent. You do not represent Texas. You do not represent Denmark or Australia. You represent, you are not of this world. You're in this world, but not of this world. God has sent you inside a human body for a season so that you would become an ambassador of his truth in the workplace, in the break room, in the classroom, courtroom. You know, how many times do, uh, do people say, hey, I need prayer, or you say, hey, can I pray for you? Or, or you, when you see somebody, they just said, man, I really need prayer about something. And you'll say, okay, um, we'll pray for you. And then you walk off and do you actually really pray for them? Why not just grab their hand right, right there then. and just pray for them right there on the spot? Um, there's been times where we've gone and seen people at the mall. Uh, recently, we ran into some people that, that we knew right from a long time Right in front of Neiman Marcus. Ago. Boom. Yeah. And they said that they needed prayer about something. So we said, Actually, they just were talking and I said, yeah, listen. hey, listen, it's been a while since we've seen you guys. Do you mind if we pray yeah. together? So we circled up right there in front of Neiman Marcus at the mall. Most people are going to need your initiation. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go, hey, listen, I'm hurting. Will you pray for me? You're going to have to initiate it. And so it's so simple. Once you do that, there's also times where you have to initiate. Have you ever been baptized? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people did the sinner's prayer thing. Hey, raise, raise my hand. I'm saved. 
but they've never been baptized. They've never been filled with the Spirit, but they need an initiator, an activator, somebody who will be mobilized, that will ignite, that will wake up, kickstart, whatever you want the word to be. Right. You've got to be that catalyst in the marketplace. And that's having the kingdom mentality. So again, remember, we're talking about how easy it is to listen to motivational sermons that help us go back and make more money. We, we want you to have more. Yeah. And the more of that is go from a galactic view, 30,000 foot view, look at what Jesus did. What was Jesus most preoccupied with? I want to say this. We like Jesus are called to build king, God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So what does that mean? Well, that is exactly what we're talking about in this chapter. This is chapter seven, my favorite number, <laughs> 777, mm -hmm. uh, kingdom mentality. And I want to read a couple of scriptures here because if you start to think like Jesus thought, you'll want to do what Jesus did. And if you do what Jesus did, then you'll get what Jesus got. And if you get what Jesus got, then that makes you a king. That makes you an heir. That makes you in the sweet spot of hearing, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And so good morning, Mitzi. I'm going to be spending time with you tomorrow in Atlanta. I'm excited about that. So let's read a couple of uh of definitions so that we can see when we talk about kingdom mentality, it's important to understand kingdom order. Now, ladies, we love the idea of being a queen. And I think the guys love the idea of being a king and, and God always, obviously Jesus talked a lot about kingdom order in the family. Why? Because the family represents the same relationship we're to have with Christ. The woman's body, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, talked about it with my kids. The woman's body is a living example of the tent of tabernacle or the temple of the Old Testament where you got your outer court, your inner court, and then your veil, and then your most holy of holies. There's some, everything God created, I spent hours yesterday creating a, a new creation book that really walks through the first parts of creation all the way through what the original mandate of God's glory was, even all the way back to Lucifer, God's glory, and walking that out through to the creation of man, through to creation of, or the begotten son of God, his death, burial, resurrection. And how does that play into our death, burial, and resurrection and baptism so that we come up fully empowered by the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, so we can basically emulate Jesus and be a carrier of his spirit here on earth. That is what the entire Bible is about mm -hmm. in Summing a nutshell. Yep. So if you go in and go, well, I'm just going to read Mark 11, 22 to 25 because I need a new car <laughs> and have faith in God whatsoever you say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And you just pick and choose what you feel like your narrative needs that day or what you think would be a good sermon for that day. You miss the abundance of what God's really saying. He wants you to be his king, priest and prophets right here right now carrying out kingdom order mm -hmm. you know I've, I've heard people talk about kings priests and prophets and they separate it out as if you can only be one but not the other and that's not true for years we we've we've studied it like that your kings mm -hmm. or priests but when revelations was talking he says he's made us a kingdom of priests meaning we carry a kingdom mentality as priests in this world. Mm -hmm. So again, when you go back and you study the Hebrew or the Greek, the original connotation of even specific words, like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, period. Then you've got thousands of years, maybe millions before the next sentence. And if you don't read what was meant in Hebrew, you won't know that it says then... And the word was, in the beginning, God created the heavens and, and, and then the earth became. The word was means became. So now you read it, then the earth became void. So mm -hmm. something happened in between first sentence and second sentence. I believe it was the fall of Satan. Mm -hmm. I believe that's when uh, there was catastrophe, darkness. Of course, scientists all back the theory up, but... Um, when you study the Word of God, which is what we want to teach you how to do, make sure that you're getting the fullness out of it so you get the full meal deal out of it as well. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be one sh fry short of a Happy Meal. <laughs> 
Ever known any people like that? Yes. And you know what? I've been shorted a fry on my Happy Meal too. So I know that side of the story. There's well. nothing worse than getting a Happy <laughs> Meal or fries and they don't give you ketchup. Uh, you tr that's true. You have to have ketchup with the fries. It's like the whole package. You want the whole meal deal. Has nothing. Well, maybe it does. We want you to have the <laughs> kingdom order. So let's look at king. I don't eat Happy Meals, by the way. That was just uh, an analogy. <laughs> he eats water burger meals. Yeah, I don't like McDonald's. Okay, moving on. McDonald's won't be sponsoring you. <laughs> You're not going to have a big M on your hat. That's okay. Okay. I want a W on my hat. So, <laughs> an orange W hat. If you if Whataburger sponsored you, you'd have to wear burnt orange. No, that's not burnt orange. That's a bright orange. It's a different color orange. Larry played football for Texas A&M, so burnt orange is not his favorite color. Uh, uh. <laughs> not really. We love all people. That's true. Are you a little cantankerous this morning? Maybe so. Let's go. Kingdom okay. mentality. Okay. King, this is a noun, one that holds a preeminent position of rank, dignity, or authority. So the reason why that's important is because when we talk about king, we're talking about a mindship of authority. If you are already ranked in your mind, your will, your emotions at the highest rank in the land, you're not going to be moved by what people say because you already know you hold the seat. Well, you already hold the seat at the right hand of God the Father. The Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father in that kingdom, and we are seated with him. So now his head becomes our head, which means we are his body extension on earth in order to fulfill what Jesus, what God wants to have fulfilled on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Who, how is that going to happen? Through us, okay? So as kings or queens in this modern world, we have the opportunity to rule and reign in our jobs, in our businesses, in our responsibilities, uh, to create the provision for our families and those who rely on our conquering spirits. So as a king today, God wants you to walk into that office and feel a sense of ownership, a confidence, a certainty that outweighs uncertainty so that you can walk in kingdom order, that you go in and you may not be the highest person in rank in your office. In fact, you may be the janitor, but as a janitor, you can walk in knowing, they don't know it. I'm just here incognito as a janitor because really, I'm a king. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you start in the company either. I actually, this is a, a side story, but I knew a guy when I was in college, he was the president of a biochemical company out of Houston. And so he, when, when I interviewed him and talked to him about like, you know, how did he get to this position? Cause I was really curious because he was a very successful man. He started in that company as a janitor, worked his way up, went from janitor to a truck driver, a truck driver to a salesman, a salesman to a manager, manager to a director, director to one of the executives, and then ended up running that company. So it doesn't matter where you start. It's the mentality that you have as you go along. See yourself where you want to be so that your mind, your will, your emotions begin to act the role even before you get there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that actually coming up when we talk about CEO mindset. That's tomorrow. That's powerful. We got some amazing corporate stories. Mm -hmm. We're going to share about what it means to have a CEO mindset. When you see yourself, you remember when we were dating, and we didn't go out together. We didn't go without friends. The only time we were ever alone together was when we were driving somewhere. Mm -hmm. And even then, we took precautions by putting the picture of our pastor <laughs> on, the, on the front of the car. You know how uh, if, if you go to church and, and the pastor will send out a Christmas card that has the entire family on there? So our pastors had done that. And so we took their picture of the entire family and put it right there on the dash of the car. Ruthie Darty, Sarah Worley, all of the kids, I mean, all of those Darty kids were at Victory Christian Center smiling at us. It, it was like a cold shower. We would a, hold hands, but that was it. <laughs> Have the entire past. But what family. the Holy Spirit said to me back then was, Stacy, if you want a ministry as significant as Billy Graham, then act like Billy Graham today, meaning 
if the paparazzi was following Billy Graham around and he was going into women's apartments or houses, what would they do? Well, we know media is always trying to get a different angle, a different uh, story. Mm-hmm. So don't give room to the enemy. That's why I made decisions that I made a long time ago because I wanted the mere appearance of evil to be removed from my life. Mm. And so I wasn't always perfect in it, but we made perfect in that as we stayed consistent to that. So act like a king today so that you can have the kingdom God has prepared for you. Okay, the second one is we're going to, and this is of course, 1 Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. <clears throat> Once you were not a people, but now you are a people. You've been called into his kingdom, calling people out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now think about this. When, when that says you are a kingdom of prayer, you are a priesthood, a holy nation. Just like Jesus was the high priest. Remember the spirit of Jesus is, not, is inside of us. So that makes us king. Little K, Jesus is the big K, we're the little K. We run kingdoms on earth. Our kingdoms on earth are our families, our homes, our, our jobs. We've got Business, s- yeah. sphere of influence. What is mm-hmm. your sphere of influence? Well, even prayer of Jabez, oh Lord, bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory mm-hmm. means sphere of influence. Mm-hmm. So you want more in this world, start acting like the king you were destined to be or queen. So then the second definition we cover here is priests. Well, we're also called to be priests. So if you're just about making money, making money, making money, and if I go onto your Facebook and all I see is your house, your cars, your stuff, and it's kingdom, 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 and I don't see you feeding the poor, clothing the naked, taking care of those who are less fortunate, you are an imbalanced leader, and there's probably some narcissism in there. Yeah. Because it's all about king, 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 and you've missed the priesthood. So the priesthood, here's what the word priest means, an authorized minister or elder dedicated to performing the sacred rites of a religion on behalf of the people, often standing as a mediator between man and God. Now we know that Jesus was the high priest. We don't have to go to a priest or a temple in order to be forgiven. And now you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? You are the carrier of God's presence that puts you in the position now of being a priest, taking care of the needs of the people around you. Right. Larry and I were, were often called to rescue people who have tried to commit suicide, who are going through depression, who are, I think about the young people who've been at our house, who um, have made really, really bad decisions. And they, we end up, we don't have a church. We don't have a brick and mortar, but why do they call us? Why are we on their hot dial? Why do they come here? Because they know we will step into the role as a priest and we will pray for them. We will lay hands on them. We will cast out demons on them. We baptize people. We do everything Jesus did and and Paul did and the apostles did. We do that because that is our rule and reign on earth in the kingdom that God has given us. Mm -hmm. And as we read Martha, Melissa, and Susan, and all the ladies that I read the testimonies. Man, y'all need to step it up. (laughs) Ain't got not one of y'all. Hey, let me tell you how I pray. Hey, I I have to say though, in our, uh, the men's group that um, we had last night, the men really were talking about testimonies of of things that they had going on in their marketplace. And so, although they didn't send it in on a text message Way to represent, Larry. But they were sharing their testimonies. You're not gonna let your men hold it down. No, no, they they actually were doing good. Good. Well, that's what we do as priests, is we're in the marketplace, we're where people are, that's the nation. Remember, Jeremiah 1.5, said that you'll be a spokesperson, right? That's the third part. That is prophet. So king, that is where you rule, reign, create financial wealth, where you have your job. That is an economic position of strength and authority, kingdom authority. Then you have priest. That is the position of spiritual authority, where you're praying and you're doing what Jesus did, laying hands. These signs and wonders will follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. For those of you who just popped on, we're going through chapter seven on unleashed and anointed for business. What is the anointing that God has on your life to be anointed to do what he's called you to do 
in the marketplace. He's anointed you for kingdom business. What is kingdom business? Taking care of God's people, maturing the body of Christ, praying for the sick. These signs and wonders will follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will cast out demons. They will set at liberty the captives. The recovery of sight to the blind. Everything Jesus said, I am, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Everything Jesus did, greater works than those will you do because now Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, so you got to represent. We got to represent. Mm -hmm. We don't just wait and go, oh, you know, I'll take you to church with me on Sunday so that the pastor can represent. The pastor's a shepherd. Mm -hmm. He's there to tend to the flock, but you are called to go to the sick. Jesus says, I didn't come to the healthy. I came for the sick. You are called to go into all the world and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, the third one is a uh, prophet. And let's just read the definition here of prophet. And I love this. An effective or leading spokesman for a cause, doctrine, a group, or especially one who is regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. Mm -hmm. So l let's just break that down. Of course, if we look in, in Ezekiel, if we look back in, in Old Testament, we study Jeremiah or Isaiah, we see that prophets were seers. They, they, were, they were seers and they were hearers. They listened, God would give them a word, but their responsibility then was to take that word in, meditate on it, and then make sure it gets to the people at the right time, at the right place, in the right way. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people have a prophetic gift, but they just, yeah. they say what they feel. They, it's, it's laced in flesh. Mm -hmm. And I'll be real transparent. I used to be that way because I hadn't matured mm -hmm. in that being a predominant gift in my life. Well, and, and you have to exercise the gift in, in a way that you have to know when to hold your tongue <laughs> and, and not, because it's not for, the time is not for now for that to be shared, but it's, it's for a later time. And so it's, it's just learning when to discern when you should share what, what you've been given and where, when you should not. You know, even, even in the business place, even in the marketplace, you know, you could be a prophet at work. You know, I know lots of uh, people who are in management roles or, or director positions or even presidents or CEOs of company, and they will get a download from the Lord. They may not give credit, but they will get uh, something that is inspired by the Lord and either they will deal with it because it's an issue that's happening in the company, or maybe it's something that uh, is a new idea, a new business idea that's gonna take the company to the next level. We know a lot of companies, businessmen, that that's their secret sauce. Mm -hmm. They just, they know. They may not always give credit, <laughs> but it is, it is their we secret know. sauce. Yeah, we know. We know where your help comes from. <laughs> yes. Being able to see and hear is all a part about knowing God's voice. That's why we spent so much time in Mission Possible writing about how to discern God's voice mm -hmm. in your life, how to know his voice, not from a high spiritual theological perspective, but just in everyday life. How do you know the voice of God? Well, to be a prophet means you also declare the voice of God. And I've, I've gotten you fired before. <laughs> it's true, <It's> true. <laughs> yes i saw some in I mean, some significant indiscrepancies yeah. in your boss's wife and i went hey by they were <laughs> intoxicated well this is this is uh, years, years ago. and years and years ago early on in our marriage and early on in in, in ministry and but yeah, you... And you, I went quietly and said, hey, listen, I don't think you, you should didn't be drinking it. like that. No, I, she, she did it in private and um, I, it, honestly... She was starting to make a little bit of a fool of herself and I took her aside and then the next day, boom, Larry's fired. Yeah. It's like, oh! I didn't need to be working there anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, <laughs> but what was amazing, and obviously God set that up, because from that you were elevated to a greater position. All things work together for good. But I do remember the stress. Mm -hmm. So just know whatever you, make sure you're going by the order of the word of God. Make sure that you're testing a word, making sure that you're testing the spirits, make sure that you're operating in love, 
making sure that you're wanting the best outcome for the people that are involved. We're, we got something we got to deal with today about that. Mm. But to do it in love and, and do it truly from, from the heart of God. Okay, I want to read just on this last page here. This is, uh, it's, it's called Establishing Kingdom Order. And I, this is how we're going to end this today because this is really what God has called us to do in the workplace, in, in, at work, in school, in your home, is to establish kingdom order, that you are king, priest, and prophet of your home and your office. Okay, we, like Jesus, are called to build God's kingdom on earth. It's our responsibility to do our part as kings who create provision, as priests who seek intimacy with the Father, and as prophets who pray for wisdom to know His will and enlighten the world to understanding his purposes. Not only is this a powerful kingdom strategy, but it's also a wise business model that places us in a position of strength and certainty. When we take on a kingdom mindset, we will grow more and more passionate about our role in the marketplace. We should be helping care for the needs of the people while also providing spiritual wisdom for them to follow. Paul the Apostle was a very educated scholar and a tent maker. So he had both the, the priesthood and he also had the kingship. And he also was a very, very strong seer. He was also very prophetic in nature. Well, he also worked with his talents in the marketplace to provide a platform for his ministry. He warned people. He enlightened them. Um, he also cast vision and prophesied of things that would come in the future. So ask God today where you can shore up. Is it king, priest, prophet? What we do know is Jesus was all three. Mm -hmm. And the mystery of Christ in you is the hope of glory. We started this all back a week, two weeks ago about how to re manifest the glory of God in your life. You can pray for it. You can sing for it. You can dance for it. But there are kingdom principles in order for that glory to be magnified to its maximum capacity in your life. There's things you must do. It is not, oh God, I want more of you. I want more of you. He's waiting for unity of the people. He's waiting for the body of Christ to get clean. You can't clean up the whole body of Christ, but you can clean up your mess mm -hmm. and you can turn your mess into a message. Mm -hmm. So God is saying, you're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you to get ready. King, priest, prophet, today in the marketplace, we pray, Father God, mm -hmm. that everyone that's watching God, even if it's a tiny morsel they get out of these teachings each morning, a tiny morsel to help them have a bigger kingdom perspective so that God, they will go out into the highways and the byways and they will find people and encourage them to repent and be baptized, bringing people into the kingdom, teaching them kingdom order so that God, we can clean up the bride of Christ, God, so that we can do what you've called us to do and be the hands and feet of the body of Christ, executing the love of God, bringing about the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, patience, long suffering, kindness, self-control. God, we thank you that you've given us the ability to walk in the fruit of the spirit, even as kings, priests, and prophets in the marketplace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We, uh, again, challenge today. Who are you going to pray for? Mm. Love to see those posts. Come back here. Put it in the thread. Let us see how you are going out and being Jesus in the marketplace. Tell people. You know, I, I, people private message me, and I'm like, go post it. Yeah. Because we want <laughs> other people to see yeah. what the body of Christ is doing. Yeah. Let's make... Let's make evangelism popular again. Let's make evangelism as popular as selfies. Wow. You know, and, and, and it is amazing because people will sit there and private message us or send us text messages, but post it. You know, let other people see. Even if it's just you walking up to somebody and paying for their coffee or, or just telling them that God loves you. You know, it doesn't have to be you sitting down and, <clears throat> you know, and witnessing to them and, and you know, preaching the, the four gospels to them or whatever. But it's just sharing God's love out in the marketplace. It'll make a difference. It will make a difference. And for those of you that are very comfortable doing that, I'm going to encourage you, step it up. Ask mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Ask yes. them. Have you been baptized? Ask them. Is there anything you're struggling with? And when you start to hear, you know, I'm struggling with this or that, you might have to ask, do you, do you mess around with any kind of witchcraft? You might have to go into That's why when we get to the back end of this book, <laughs> you're going to see, I walk you through how to walk people through deliverance, how to pray for the sick so that they get healed. It is not difficult. It's simple, but it's important. Deliverance is a little bit more detailed, but praying for the sick, you can be doing that. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing. You want to make sure that you're doing it under the spirit of Christ and he's got your back. He wants it more than you do. So have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back again. Got any jokes? Got any dad jokes before we go? <laughs> um, knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Nah, I messed that one up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a dad joke. Just I know. dad's best up jokes. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye. That was so